But right. now nah, we've been through so much. But as long as we deal with it the right way, we come out gods. Yes. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I was telling the uh, crowd that today is that if you look at, you know, the group of black people in America and the amount of things that we innovated and invented and the amount of culture that we created while under oppression, there has never been a people in the history of this planet Earth that's done that before. And wow. we don't always know how to quantify our value because we're still going through it. You got to just take a, a, a second and reflect on what we've done in this short period of time under these right. circumstances. It's never been a people that done that before. Correct, correct, but correct. That, that greatness that exists in us, that's just and, every day. And, and, and it's not greatness. And you're, you're 100% right. And it's not like, oh, we're better than, but it is what it is. You know, right. anybody that goes through extreme types of training or whatever, you come out more resilient, you come out better. You know what I'm saying? Stress literally produces diamonds you know mm -hmm. yeah. or, the bus, or the bus pipes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it's a lot, there's a lot of old school cliche sayings that sound corny, but they're so right. It's wisdom. It's so profound. What don't kill me makes me stronger. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's so I'm, real. You want to go on this light? It's so, yeah, I mean, it's so relevant. You know, it, it, it's like working out. I'm trying to find me some light, but it's like working out because you know, when you work out and you're tricking your body and, and, and you get to find some sort of growth, but if your body is going through the same level of... No, nah, but if your body is going through the same level of pain, you ain't going to find no real gains. You ain't going to find no real growth in that. Right. Like, you, you got you to gotta go through different type of pain. You got to go through this pain and then right. simultaneously test yourself with another level of pain. And then you're like, all right, this is something I ain't experienced before. We got to grow in order to be able to endure and handle this. So a lot of us, you know... We like to stay at our level of pain, knowing what we can handle. You understand me? So we can look strong handling the things we handle. It's like a father that's taking care of his kids that's going through the struggle but won't do the extra four hours of studying and researching daily so that he can get to another level. It's like, yeah, you're handling your business, but that ain't where evolution starts. That ain't where real growth starts. So for me, it's like people ask me, kids, how you so positive? I don't think about being positive. It's just that I have been through so much that the negativity allowed me to become stronger. You understand me? Right, when you right. work out, those are, that weight is a negative force against you. And yeah. the more you can pick it up, you start to look for more so you can get stronger. You so have to. I don't think about being positive. I just think about becoming stronger. Yeah, once you, when you're ascending, right, and you get to a certain level, you have to do more to keep your ascension because you're plateau. If you plateau long enough, you'll start to decline and yeah. descend. So you're right, on, you're right on point with it, bro. It's, that's yeah. real. Yes, sir. But Yo, yeah, man, to... it's actually a pleasure to meet you, man. It's our yeah. first time actually conversing. No doubt, and I no doubt. I definitely didn't know that <laughs> y'all was connected. You feel yeah. me? I ain't just seen you talking to billionaire. You mm. feel me? So yeah, that's 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 love. That's yeah, fire, we, we, man. We uh, have a uh, we have a beautiful son together. He's nineteen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Powerful young man. You know what I mean? And he got bars. You know what I'm saying? So that's my yeah. little guy. But yeah, we got yeah. a son. Yep. So so that's my that's my that's my dog right there. That's my. We, you know, we we known each other forever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Let Let me ask you, man, because you know you a fighter, right? And it's a it's an interesting thing being a fighter, putting yourself in potential harm's way, right? Mm -hmm. Not everybody has that sort of mental fortitude to be like, you know what? I'm going to train and put myself in harm's way to test my training, mm -hmm. right? And so, what is the what's the mental process that keeps you wanting to get back in the ring? And what's the difference between when you're thinking about getting in the ring to when you actually get in there? What's the thought process? All right, so I stopped fighting a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And then I started back in 2017 because, you know, life is just getting better and better and better, you know, financially or whatever. And I just don't want to ever get soft. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that was a way for me to, you know, harden the fuck up, if, excuse my, my language, and also to keep myself in that, there's none of my colleagues are doing anything like this. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't need to do this. You right. know? Like, you know, uh, my last fight, I was in Arizona getting ready for my fight in Scottsdale, you know, getting out of my big house to go out in the cold to run in the morning. Like, it takes a lot of discipline for that. You know what I'm saying? So it was just for me to, to just reignite and make sure I am who I always thought that I was. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so and, and, and part of that suffering that I talk about, like, yeah, it is, it's, it's a, men, it's mentally tormenting you. You know what I'm saying? When you have a fight and you know it, 
and you you know you have somebody that's gonna try to hurt you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then with me, it's like <laughs> my situation was unique because I got a lot of eyes on me. A lot of people would love to see me get humiliated. You know what, mm. what I'm saying? So I'm I'm going in there with all of that all of that on me. You know what I'm saying? So it, it makes me just rise to that occasion. And um, you know, everything and to keep it one hundred, everything is terrifying until that bell rings. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right. And then it's like, all right, I'm comfortable in here. Um, it, it's high level three dimensional chess problem solving with high stakes. You yeah. Know the stakes ain't, oh, we just lose. The stakes is I could get my job, bro. I could get hurt. I could get humiliated. You know what I'm saying? So the stakes is high. So I love it. It just keeps me sharp. And it's so much more mental than people understand. It's very mm -hmm. physical. You know what I'm saying? So, and even me, like, I'm older than anybody I'm fighting. You know what I'm saying? Mm, yeah. And I'm actually smaller than everybody I'm fighting because heavyweights, the, I'm six foot, 220. The, the average heavyweight is 6'5", 250. That's the average, mm. right? Damn. So I'm not about to lose 20, 30 pounds, you know what I mean? So so all of that, I got to take all that in there and figure out how to outsmart these guys. Because I can't just out, I can't out youth or muscle them, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. be smarter. So it just keeps me sharp, bro. It's just like learning a new language or learning how to play a, a, an instrument. It just activate different areas of the brain, you know what I'm saying? So, you know. There's no separation, in my opinion, from the mind and the body. It's all connected. So it just that physical uh, endeavor helps me, you know, ascend mentally. So I know. like that because, you know, that's that's the warrior's journey, right? And that's that's anybody at the same time. When you come from the streets, you got a certain grit, you got a certain, you know, dynamism as you right. moving around, and you sharp, right? Because right. your your very survival depend on it. You never know what your next move, you know, what I mean, can cost you. And so when you find yourself getting accustomed to comfort, right? Mm -hmm. And right. those same dangers no longer exist. Your sharpness starts to dull. Correct. You understand me? Correct. So the person that gained the wealth is no longer the person that's enjoying it, Correct. right? And so at some point in time, you do have to always continue to keep that new dynamism towards life where you're resharping yourself. Because right. those skill sets is what's going to allow you to continue to grow and go further and further and further and further. Correct. So for me, I was always taught never become comfort corrupt. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Like the moment you become comfortable, corrupt, you start to rot. And mm -hmm. so it is always, look, go put yourself back in them streets. Go, not the streets per se. You know what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I, know, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Back in that, in that mental place that you was yeah. in when he, you, you had that innovation, that productivity, that inventiveness, that sharpness. You understand right. me? That, that grit, you feel me? And most yeah. men don't test themselves no more. You nah, feel me? Like you're, you're, we got a right. very comfortable society to where – you know, being a man beyond what you see on TV, saying black men are targeted, this, that, and the third. In reality, when I rationalize it, I don't feel no threat. You feel me? When I walk outside, it may it may exist, but I don't walk around with it. You feel me? On me. Likewise. But likewise. When, when it comes to you testing yourself, now that's a difference, right? Because you put in yourself in situations that make you uncomfortable. And you don't know what the outcome is going to be. And then those are the moments where you become great. Not in the mm -hmm. moments where you've already mastered, mm -hmm. right? So most mm -hmm. of the men on here, and I'm speaking of men because we, we got a big issue with, you know, men being men. And right. so it's, it's like you got to go back out there, test yourself, because most people are more, I would say, tapped into their feminine side, and most mm -hmm. have lost their masculine side whatsoever. And right. society is going to continue to pitch you your feminine side. Mm -hmm. And I would say, look, bro, you already got that down. It seems mm -hmm. like you, you tapped into that a little too much. So right. now you got to go back out there. And when you think about testosterone, men do things because we see other men win in those right. things. So right? Tim, I got a I got a question for you, bro. Yes, um, sir. Explain that to me. Um, your perspective on you know like men being more tapped into the feminine than the masculine. So I mean it in multiple multiple layers of perspective, right? On that one. Um, when I grew up, I grew up in Oakland, California. You were black Muslim bakery. And all I knew was men, men. Like, everybody that I grew up with was killers. You understand right. me? And it was just known, like, this is how these brothers handle business. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand the feminine nature of men until I became grown. And I had to tap into that aspect myself so that I can balance myself out, especially mm -hmm. when it came to the relationship of dealing with women and dealing with my own emotional emotions, period. Mm -hmm. So growing up with men, of course, being masculine, that definition, by definition, is a typical trait of a man. You know, right. and man is a construct, so every male is not a man. So what is masculinity right. itself? Right. You're talking about those those traits of work ethic, those traits of willpower to be able to take something out your mind 
and produce it in reality, that's a masculine trait, right? right? Ambition is considered to be a masculine trait. Leadership can be qualified as a masculine trait. Logic, rationality, that all comes from our masculine, conscious, logical mind, right? Mm -hmm. And so what we got to do when we do ourselves, because I believe that most men don't have emotional experience, right? Mm -hmm. Women, when they feel things, they want to feel the full range of the emotion. Mm -hmm. Men like, ah, why would I want to feel the full range? <laughs> like, I'd rather get to a point of logic and cut that off and then keep moving forward, right? That's our point of survival is the fact that we can cut that out and do the most logical thing so the family can eat. We can continue to hunt and we're not worried about a broken heart or, you know, going over an issue too much. But right. when we talk about divine masculinity, it's it's of the higher mind. So you're talking about a man who has balance within his own emotions. One who mm -hmm. does understand his emotions. And the quickest way for a man to start understanding that is to study a woman. Because she is the representation of feminine energy. And we the met representation of masculine energy in whole. But mm -hmm. we have to balance it out. So when it came to even empathy, right? That's a very feminine essence trait. Nature is feminine. Meditation can be considered feminine. Expression, singing, rapping, poetry, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, so many things. Even fighting besides the logical, you know, mathematical aspect like boxing, that wouldn't be feminine because that's very thought provoking. But for a person to lose their anger, right? Mm -hmm. And to lash out, that would be feminine because you have a lack of control over emotion, right? When the principles of war can be considered feminine because a man will more so come to terms of negotiation, right? That's logical mm -hmm. principle rather mm -hmm. than I want to hurt this person because I'm hurt. I want to hurt this person because I have no, I don't know what other way to deal with this emotion that I'm feeling. And so a lot of men today are tapped into the emotional side when it comes to them being intuitive, when it comes to them having, you know, emotional intelligence, when it comes to them just being in that soft nature of empathizing with the world wholly. But a lot of them don't know how to hold their posts. A lot mm -hmm. of them don't, don't know how to hold their emotions. A lot of them don't know how to secure a household. You know, a lot of them don't know how to build something and, and to have a thought and to see it all the way out. Because they say, you know what? I don't feel like doing it. Procrastination mm -hmm. to me is a feminine thing because procrastination is about what you don't feel like doing. Mm -hmm. Because if you were truly ma uh, uh, masculine in that mindset, you would find a logic and a rationality and a reason to get it done. Mm -hmm. Right? So I was always taught that, you know, you're supposed to rise above emotions into the thinking of a God. And so a man can become, a male can become a man, right, on his own by developing those traits, but he can't become a God without a woman because mm -hmm. she's going to balance out that feminine nature within him that allows him to tap in and be balanced on all sides. Right. So, yeah, growing up with my father and my brother, I never seen that feminine side at all. You mm -hmm. understand me? Like, my, my pops, he ain't show no emotion. You right. feel me? Like, I mean, just because, you know, I the, the environment was just pure militant and soldier. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't see any with my father ever. I seen my father cry for like two seconds. And that was when yeah. my, father died. you know, what I'm saying that was it. I seen that happen once when my uncle died, and yeah. I seen my pops cry. You right. feel me? And, and, and you remember moments like that because yeah. was, you know that's the reason you don't cry because you don't see the the person you look up to cry. So it's like, nah, that's not something I'm supposed to do. Right. But in reality. You know, crying is an expression of emotion. Vulnerability is strength, right? Like, the yeah. man that has to protect himself the most have less power, right? right? If, if I can walk down the street without a bodyguard and this person has to walk down the street with five, who has the most protection in real life? Who has the most power in real life? And that's how we are with our emotions. We got to put up all of these guards and these blocks when we're walking around. We can't just be vulnerable, right? right. So the, the true strength is in our vulnerability and our ability to be able to express ourselves and share and those things that we may feel like, nah, they're going to think I'm weak. So if you can go through that range of emotions and still do it, that's strength. Right. You yeah. Know? I have a feminine asking a little bit different. So my perspective is a little different. So I feel like the fighting, <laughs> you know, I, uh, uh, both emotional stimulus, I think that's masculine. Right? I, uh, bro. All right. Like, you said you, know, I, I, you broke up a little bit. I want to make sure I hear you. All right. So you you touched on something earlier about um, of like say say for instance a fight. A lot of these characteristics of a man, um, like fighting, right? Well, well, I I wanna I wanna qualify that. So like, let's say particularly fighting with your hands is 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 different. I would say more so shooting would be considered more feminine, you know, I, than fighting. But 
being emotional and fighting would be different. No, no, no. Fighting, shoot, all of Someone hurts your feelings. Responds, okay. Fighting, right? So I think that that's masculine. Okay. Side of masculinity. You know what I'm saying? I say that because, you know, we may say that, oh, women are but they're not as violent as, as we are, as men are. It's just, it is what it is. We're wildly more violent. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's just the animalistic lower nature, you know what I'm saying? That that animal brain, that reptile brain, us not ascending to that intelligent, uh, uh, that cerebral cortex we have. So that's an instinctual for something to hurt your feelings or make you feel threatened or whatever. You want to hit them, hurt them, fight them, do whatever, shoot them, whatever, whatever you got to hurt that person. You know what I'm saying? I I, I believe that that's more of a matter. Trait. It's not a positive masculine trait. It's a low level. That's low level uh, frequency. You know what I'm saying? So, um, because women don't do that. They they don't fight. Women. Let me let me say this, say this. An uh, alpha male. Let's say let's say in chimpanzees, right? The alpha, not the biggest guy, right? He may not even be the most formidable. Can fight, but he's the one that the little chimp that's getting food taken. He go and protect him. And there's, I've seen so many videos. I, I'm so fast. Stuff. He also, he, the other chimp got bit by somebody. He'll hold him, like to make him feel comfort. You know what I'm saying? So these feminine traits, like from my mother, stepmother, from uh, your mother, like women have a certain level of sacrifice that they do for love for who they care about that men don't typically have. You know what I'm saying? This is why most men. Don't stay with their, you know what I'm saying? Plan a seed, go plan another. That's just an innate, instinctual thing that's in us. It is what it is. It's, it's biology. You know what I'm saying? Go on, boy. What's wrong with you? Hold on, dog. Trickle. But anyway, um, you know, so some of the feminine characteristics I think makes us really strong, powerful men. And so let's talk about when I talk about boxing. I back into boxing. Right? Part of that was guns for my kids because they don't have upbringing, right? Kids are not out. Like, when I was a kid, we was, we, bro, we could play every sport. You know what I'm saying? We was competitive, got to fight, all of that. It doesn't happen anymore. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I want to, I want to do to inspire my son. Yeah. It might put me in danger, but I'm going to do that for them. Mm -hmm. What else can I do? For them to, you know, want to, you know, do something other than, you know, just video game workout because they, 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 you know, I always a lot, but you do that all the time. Um, like we were talking about, you still need to ascend higher. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, a lot of things that I do personally, I try to. I'm always trying to be a better person, better, better father, a better friend, business partner, all. Of that. So it's like how upon myself to do to be a better whatever and sometimes it's characteristics that in women in my life that i that are powerful to me you know what i'm saying that i have to adopt uh the love that they have that level of love i would i would i would die a slow death for what i love and that's powerful you know what i mean there's mm -hmm. no other thing that I think of that I would die for, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, other than love. So, and that, that, that typically speaking, that we see in women, and at least women that I've experienced. The men in my life, I'm not gonna lie, like father, he's, he's a man, powerful man, but there's very few, like, uh, oh, come on. It, it, men, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, Honorable Minister Farrakhan, he's he's one of the most people in my life. Men that are in the couple, but the women, you know what I'm saying? So I, I, I think that those really good traits, you know what I'm saying? We, 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 the masculinity is taken, like, it's a pseudo masculinity that we've adopted. That, and I know I've had, you know what I'm saying, being a, I've been a guy and you know intimidating people. I've, I've 
done all of those things that I'm very embarrassed about. You know what I mean? Uh, that stuff is not what being a man. That's not a good type of masculine. That's a animalistic type of mas masculinity that'll get you killed. You know what I'm saying? Or, or, yeah. or prison where, where it should be. We live in a civilized society. You know what I mean? We should do something to make feel they physically. They still breaking up a little bit, Mike. Okay, okay. All right. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, nah, I just, I just feel like, man, it's, it's just a lot that we can learn from women. You know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Be Everything, really. I, I, I feel like I've learned more. Now, no one can teach you how to be you, right? And I've learned there's so much of me that didn't come from my mother or my father. But outside of that, I've gotten so much more wisdom from the women and the powerful women that I look that I that I love and respect. Um, you know, that is the fine. They you know, even like birth of child. I don't I wouldn't want that I wouldn't want to be have to do that at, like no. I, nah, I, ain't no babies coming if I gotta do it. You know <laughs> like, it's gonna be a plan. You know, <laughs> you know but that that, that when I when you really think about that, the discomfort that they have for nine months, bro, their body not being as fit and sexy, and you know that stuff matters. That stuff really messes with with the mind, bro. And they do it with love. You know what I'm saying? So you know, I, I have nothing like the 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 most humility in the presence of a woman. Yeah. You know? Now uh, now I would say this, Mike. Yeah. Um. When I think about feminine and masculine, I don't think about man or woman. Okay. I think about principles and energy, right? Okay. And so I know it's it's typical in society when we say feminine, um, a lot of times the context is that we're talking about women, right? But because I have feminine within me, I have masculine within me, these are two energies. And I think about, so when I speak about emotions, I'm speaking about my feminine aspect of myself, Right. So I'm not thinking about the woman side of me. No, that's the energy that I have. Think about it though. Think about it though. Think all right, I'm I'm following you, but let's let's chart a course. Now, feminine and masculine doesn't have to be man or woman, right? We agree with that. But let's say somebody make you mad, you hit them, right? That's a emotional thing, right? So do women do that? I mean, yes. But do they do that as much as they don't do it with the same uh, manner? No, because also you have to think if a man that is angry, that is small and skinny. Right. And he's angry at somebody who's bigger than him. He's not going to automatically punch and hit him. He doesn't have that option. Right. So oftentimes it's also because of our physiological makeup, because we know that we have the strength and we have a lack of understanding our emotional aspect that we go utilize our brute strength instead of utilizing our emotional intelligence to be able to deal with what am I feeling in that moment? So right. women having a greater amount of emotional intelligence because they deal with their full range of emotions, understand why that anger and where that anger came from. So it's men lack of understanding their feminine side that have them lash out and act in that particular manner. Mm -hmm. Right? So when I think about masculine and feminine, I don't think that it can be, uh, like, I don't think believe in ma toxic masculinity or toxic femininity. I just believe in imbalance, right? That this man was imbalanced. When we, we, we in the hood and we see somebody and be like, what you looking at? You know, that's a psychological imbalance within. We don't want people to be able to see us, right, for who we really are. So we lashing out at people before they get that opportunity. And so for somebody who goes through that healthy range of emotions and go through that process of healing, that process of healing, the processing of it, the reflection of it, right? That can be considered an emotional process. Nature is considered to be feminine. When men are too masculine, we need an outlet of expression, right? So I'm going to go into nature. I'm going to meditate. I'm going to ground because that's what's going to balance me out, right? So when you by yourself and you're doing things like business, now you need some sort of like expression. Like I've been doing this logical, rational, mathematical shit all day. I need something to balance me out. I need to, and, and, and so being with our women does that, right? Um, sometimes we go through therapeutic sessions of like art and expression and speaking to people like, yo, I need to speak to somebody because I have too much emotion bottled up in me. And, and when you're emotional, you get impressioned by something and it can become a trauma if it gets stuck in you. 
So you have to find an outlet to let it outward and to let the energy flow. And when you have balance, you're in a constant motion of allowing things to flow. It's the same thing in a relationship. Your relationship with a woman, it has to be flow. You understand me? When I'm masculine, she's feminine. If she's too masculine, I'm masculine. We two bulls that's go ahead, but right? It's like when men get into a argument with their, their woman, then they're trying to argue from a logical point to get to a point of resolution. She just wants you to feel her. She just wants you to feel where she's coming from. And so oftentimes we get to the point where we're like, no, but my point is right. That's not the point of it in the first place. Mm -hmm. But because we have a lack of emotional experience, when women are going through the ages, like through their teenage years, going through puberty, that part of that emotional part of the brain develops in them. Right. And so they have to talk to somebody because they like, yo, I have like a million thoughts in my head and emotions give you more options because you're thinking of many different ways where a logical mind just thinks of one way. I'm going to do it this way and it's done. Emotions say, no, I got to pick 10 colors before I know what I decided. The rational mind said, no, we just gonna go with this one. That allows us to get the step one done then step two. So the emotional mind has to go through that full range of understanding all aspects. And that's why women have so much power is because when a man gives them a vision, she's going to nurture that and look at all dimensions and sides and filter that through her womb, bring it back to you and be like, you know what? Did you look at it this way? Did you do this part yet? Do you do that? And you may think that she's nagging, but it's just her essence is to nurture things, right? Farming is a very nurturing thing. And so even being able to speak life into people, that could be considered a feminine power, right? So I don't think of them as weak or strong. These are just essences of energy that exist between and within us that we can utilize, right? So when I think about fighting, fighting can be considered very logical depending on the situation, right? Mm -hmm. Like yeah, I, I got to defend myself or like mm -hmm. this can be logical because if, if I would bro, then I get a certain amount of respect over here and I can utilize that for later. It can be very calculated in a sense. Yeah, but if I'm, if I'm somebody that like I'm bullying somebody because I really want to hang out with them, right? Mm -hmm. That's feminine. You understand me? Or I just got mad at you or like all, all the like anger and lack of control of emotions, like because emotions are there, it's a lack of control of your feminine side, I would say. Like we say that's feminine, but really it's a lack of control of yeah. your feminine side. Yeah. Because I, when you I, say I, that's I, feminine, it sounds like you are dogging it. Right. I, yeah, I agree with you, bro. I, I just think it's, uh, I look at it more like that spectrum of like, you're an animal. You're acting like an animal. You're a beast. You know what I'm saying? Like when people will see me like do something, whatever, a lift or you a beast. I like nah. I tamed. I have to tame the beast. You know what I'm saying? There's a beast in me, but it's not okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm my dog. My my. That's a beast. I'm a man. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I always say like uh, intellect over emotion, and that's being you know in a, in a civilized, upright man over a savage. You know what I'm saying? A savage beast animal. A lot of people's behavior, that weak behavior. It's really just instincts. It's yeah. the beast. It's so the animal this. instincts. You know what I'm saying? Um, we're above that. You know what I mean? We're above that. You, you, your mind could be up there with the beast or it could be up there with the birds in heaven, right? right. There's a frequency. Well, below human hearing is 19 hertz, right? They call that the ghost frequency. And they utilize it in movies and things of that nature because when we hear it, even though we can't like hear it from a, 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 a sound point, we feel it. And it gives us like a chill through our bodies, right? Yeah. And it gives us a spectrum of fear. And when a lion roars, it has a 19 hertz frequency. So it sends mm -hmm. fear right through your body, a chilling thing. And you get fright or flight. You don't know what to do. You can't move, right? Mm -hmm. And that's a very low vibration, right? To be in fear is a very low vibration, right? right. You can't think, right? Thinking is right. a high vibration. Enlightened thinking, imagination, creativity, love, emotions, all of those are high vibrational, right? But then when you listen to a, a bird's frequency of a very high pitch, they say it can heal tinnitus, right? The ringing in the ears because it's a healing sound, mm -hmm. right? So you have low vibrations and high vibrations that have effect on body. And Minister Lou Farrakhan broke it down one time when he said, you know, you look at man, arm, leg, leg, arm, head. But if you look at, you know, um, you take two pyramids and you invert them on top of each other, it's going to have five points. I mean, six. And mm -hmm. one of them is going to be pointed downward to your lower nature as a man, right? to where you are ruled by your lower nature. You're ruled by these lower thoughts, right? Your, your, your phallus symbol, right? Same thing that happens with women when they say you're thinking with your penis, right? So you're not, you don't have any logic right here. All the blood is rushing from your brain going down to your stomach and your IQ just drops. So you low vibrational in that moment and everything you're doing is low vibrational. 
that's not masculine or feminine that's low vibrational mm -hmm. right but when you're thinking of your higher mind you're thinking about taking care of things you're thinking from an enlightened perspective and standpoint you're thinking about visions for the world that's high vibrational right so lower frequencies and higher frequencies don't have an attachment of a trait as feminine or masculine they're just lower and higher vibrations so that state that you're talking about being beast, a woman can be in her mode. A man can be in his beast-like mode because yeah, he's sure. existing at a very low vibration. 100%. Or he can be on his far kind where everything you see come from that man, like he on a mother plane. 100%, bro. 100%. 100%. Not disagree with you at all, man. You know, and the minister, bro, like, you know, it's funny, man. Like, you, I'm 43. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I, I literally have been... Fast when I was, a, I think a, probably about 11 is when my father first showed me the minister, and I was stuck at that point. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Regardless of what chamber of life that I dwelled in, he was there. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, every speech, every I got it all. You know what I'm saying? Go, come and on. He, man. Go he, on. He's the, he, he is the tenet with a lot of my philosophy and, and how I live my life and the way I do a lot of things. You know what I mean? So, yeah. man. It would be wonderful for the world to be able to experience him in his splendor without, you know, without the garbage that they try to throw on him, you know. And I, I believe that at some point they will. They will receive it. It ain't going to be how we think it's going to be, though. You yeah. Know what I'm it's going to be, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be very mathematical how this indoctrinated in people's psyche gonna happen it has to it has to it's impossible for it not to you know what i'm saying yeah so you know yeah, I mean, it's gonna be a great day a great day yeah for the world. It, it's gonna be too late for some people but it's gonna be right on time for everybody else oh yeah exactly exactly yeah, yeah, we are, about, but yeah. listen i don't want this to die and, and right, i no want to say this live for sure because we had a, a great build man that's how i knew that that, that podcast would have got good if i made my way there oh what, what, <laughs> what, what, what do it look look I'm moving into we got we got a new building, so we're, that's almost done. I have you. You be one of my first guests in a new building, so it'll be. Man, I look forward to it. I'm flying out, whatever, man. You tell me, I'm yes, gonna fly. I bet that y'all enjoy enjoy the uh the sweat lodge tomorrow, bro. It's gonna man, be, most definitely, man. Blessings to you, God. All right, bless.